The Mexican government condemning the fatal shooting of a Mexican citizen by a U.S. Border Patrol agent over the weekend. That shooting occurred Saturday on the border just over the Rio Grande from uh, Brownsville, Texas. U.S. Border Patrol agents opened fire after being hit by rocks and having a gunman point a weapon in their direction. Mexico's government, however, calling the incident a, quote, disproportionate use of force. Roughly 6.1 million unlawful Mexican immigrants living in the United States last year, more than 5.8 lawful Mexican immigrants do reside here. And the Mexican government never has much of anything to say about the, that balance, if you will, between lawful and unlawful. The Justice Department tonight announced the indictment of five men linked to the Fast and Furious gun-running operation that led to the death of U.S. Border Patrol agent Brian Terry. The suspects, four of them still at large, face various charges including murder, assault, robbery, firearms offenses, the FBI offering up to $1 million for information leading to their arrest. The fifth suspect is in custody and has been since the night of the shooting in December of 2010. Also tonight, a formal complaint filed seeking the disbarment of Attorney General Eric Holder, accused of violating the D.C. Bar's rules of professional conduct related to his handling of the Fast and Furious investigation. Holder recently found in criminal and civil contempt of Congress this new complaint filed by two bloggers who first uncovered the Fast and Furious scandal. Joining us now for more on these major developments, Katie Pavlich, news editor at townhall.com, author of the best-selling book Fast and Furious, Barack Obama's bloodiest scandal and shameless cover-up. Katie, good to have you here. Great to be here. Uh, a year and a half later, indictments against the five men uh, uh, named today by the Justice Department. A year and a half later and two weeks after the House voted to hold Attorney General Eric Holder in both criminal and civil contempt. Now, although this is a great move toward justice for the Terry family, uh, the timing is questionable. Why would they do this after the Attorney General was held in contempt rather than previously when media and the family have asked for these court files to be unsealed many months ago? And, and a year and a half, they've had this suspect in prison. Are we led to believe, uh, for whatever reason, that this uh, the suspect who's been in custody for a year and a half only uh, over the last uh, few weeks gave up the names of his accomplices? Right, exactly. And one thing, too, is it's clear that the Justice Department is going to be, have to work with the Mexican government in finding these guys because they, the remaining four are in Mexico, they believe. Now, whether they knew about who they were beforehand, I'm not sure. But once again, the, yeah. the timing is a little suspicious. Uh, and in this bringing of this complaint, seeking the disbarment of Eric Holder by the two bloggers mm -hmm. in question who broke the story, uh, your reaction? Well, one thing throughout the Fast and Furious scandal that's been important is that they don't want anyone to be above the law, whether it's the attorney general or an ATF agent working out of Phoenix. And if the D.C. bar holds up to its own standards and you look at the code of conduct and the ethics, um, it, it does look that look as though Eric Holder did go against that code of conduct. And if they're going to take a look at it and see, he might, you know, he has an obligation to respond to a congressional subpoena. That's a legal obligation on, on some levels. And so the board will have to look into it, whether that'll be prosecuted. Probably not, considering he's the highest law enforcement official in the United States. But it's something to write down on paper and have a paper trail of. This is, I, I think this investigation, uh, led by Darrell Issa, Congressman Issa, and, and Senator Chuck Grassley, I think it's having an unintended consequence. I think the American people are getting a first-hand look at a, a, a government structure, an apparatus, a justice apparatus that is politicized, uh, in which I think there's always been great skepticism, uh, skepticism expressed by the American people. But I think it's rising to levels now that are disturbing. Uh, there's a lack of trust. And when trust breaks down in the judiciary and law enforcement, we've got, a, we've got a, even more immense problem, I think, than, for example, what's happening with our economy. Right. Well, you, you talked about Mexico before and how they have a blurred line between lawful and unlawful in their country. And the United States is exceptional in the sense that the law is equal for everyone and everyone's equal under the law. And as we're seeing in Operation Fast and Furious, the noncompliance with subpoenas, the, the assertion of executive privilege at the last hour, um, Eric Holder refusing to turn over documents that have been requested for months, refusing to comply with a 22-part subpoena. And then not to mention the U.S. attorney in Washington, D.C., who was supposed to take a hard, sure. um, you know, objective look at the contempt charges, who made up his mind and said he's not going to look at yeah. them or prosecute this, even before the contempt votes were tallied. And who apparently, uh, who was told by the 
the Obama administration not to bother with that prosecution right. thing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Katie, good to have you with us. Katie, thanks, thanks for having me. Come back soon. Thanks, Peter.